welcome to Glaze Virtual Summer Camp. Today we'll be making a faceted animal wood sign. I'm your teacher, Miss Laura. Let's see what supplies come in your kit. You'll find your doodle challenge as well as accompanying bags to help you along with your challenge. You'll have your wood canvas, stencil, selection of acrylic paints, brushes, and you'll want to also grab a water jar, napkin, and a paper plate or something for mixing colors. Let's begin with the doodle challenge. Today is a fun one. It is called the Animal Shape Challenge. You will have received two separate bags in your kit. One will contain different animals, the other will contain different shapes. Go ahead and open them up. You are going to pick one out of each and then make a wacky creation. Let's see what I have first. Circle. Owl. I like that one. All right. Let's get to doodling. If you had fun doing that, once you're finished, flip over your paper and try again. Now let's get to the main attraction. Let me teach you how to create a really cool faceted animal wood sign. First you're going to grab your wood canvas and your stencil. Now I like to use something flat and kind of thick like a gift card, a library card to first press down on your stencil to make sure that it is completely adhered to this clear plastic in the front. Then you're going to flip it over and start from one edge peeling it away making sure when you see some sticking to the white paper that you press back on it again so nothing stays stuck to the white paper and it all comes off on your clear back. This might take a little time so focus, pay attention, it's worth the effort. Now that you have your stencil peeled away, we're going to place it on our board. Once we're finished, we're going to write some things down on the bottom. So I'm going to center my stencil a little higher up, leaving some space down below. Once you feel like you've got it in a good position, go ahead and press it down. And again, using your gift card or library card, just going to press and make sure you have total contact onto the wood. Once you've got your stencil down, we're going to start painting our background. I'm going to teach you how to do a fun ombre blended background. We're going to begin by using red, yellow, and white. So we're going to start by painting the top about third of our canvas, going right over top of our elephant with our red. Nice long brush strokes will help give you an even finish so your paint does not look streaky. When you start doing short strokes, it will start to get really streaky. So really spread your paint out, nice long brush strokes. I should mention too that before you begin painting, you're going to want to place something down on the surface that you're painting so that it does not stain your painting surface. These paints will stain. You're going to want to wear clothes that you're not worried about staining as well. Now always remember to get the edges so it'll look really nice and complete once you hang it up. So that's about how much red I want but I'm going to go around a little further with my red so I can blend in my yellow because I want to create an orange with it. And I'm going to go kind of thick with the red so that there's enough paint there to mix. 
Now I am going to clean my brush because we're going to use the yellow later, so I don't want to mix too much. Really get it in there, clean it good, and dry it super well on your paper towel. You do not want any water on your brush. I'm going to put a little bit of this yellow on my palette so that I have clean yellow for later. I'm just going to start mixing it in with the red on my canvas to create an orange shade. Nice. This is about the thickness of the area that I want the orange to be. So I'm going to go back into my red and add a little more to keep mixing. If you like that streaky effect, then by all means, leave it a little less blended. Once I have that blended to my liking, I'm going to go back in with a little more red where the two colors meet just to make sure that transition is as smooth as possible. Then I'm going to go back in and add a few more streaks because I just like how it looks. Have fun with this part. Alright, now I'm going to clean my brush once again. And we're going to complete the bottom half by blending the yellow in. We're going to go back to our clean yellow. I'm going to start from the bottom up so that the very bottom of our canvas has the brightest, least blended version of our yellow. Don't forget the sides. Once you get up to your orange, just going to continue to blend it in, adding more red to it if you need to. I don't want too much more blending, so I'm just going to clean my brush completely and go back in with completely clean yellow and blend up that way. Wherever there's an area where you don't want the colors to mix, you always want a clean brush. The second you get a little bit of a color on your brush, it's going to transfer everywhere. So I just keep my napkin handy whenever I need to clean off any color. Now you're just going to give this a little bit of time to dry. It should dry pretty quickly though, because the wood is going to absorb your paint. Once your paint is dried, you're going to pull out a toothpick and you're going to peel out all the stickers that are in the center of the stencil. So you're going to be leaving this outline. So basically all the large shapes. This is a very fun part. <laughs> Once you have your sticker peeled, it's going to look like this. The next part of this is to fill in each individual shape with different colors, not having the same two colors touching at all. So we're going to be doing a lot of blending. 
You can choose whatever colors you'd like for this. I'm going to do a bunch of different shades of like blues and purples I think are going to look really nice with my background color. So I'm going to share with you a few tips on blending. I'm going to start with a few different piles of white across our palette. I got to switch to a bigger brush for grabbing my paint. When you start with the white first and add your color into it, you're going to have more control over the color that you create. So first I'm going to make a lighter blue by adding a small amount of blue into my white. Mixing, mixing, mixing. Next, I'm going to add an even smaller amount of blue, make an even lighter shade. I actually think that is even too dark, so I'm going to go ahead and add a touch more white to it. Right. Next, I'm going to create a purpley kind of shade. Starting with a very small amount of blue, I'm adding in a very small amount of red. And because my background's red, that almost looks a little too red. I want it to stand out. I'm going to add little more blue into it. I'm going to make a little bit darker version of that by adding more blue than I did the first time. And again, just a touch of red. Add a little more red to make it purpley. Once you've got the colors you like mixed up, just start painting in your lines. Now make sure you don't go outside your stencil into the next square. Go nice and slow, that way you'll have more control. Gonna go ahead and paint a bunch of random shapes with this darkest blue. Now I'm choosing to use the darkest color for the most distinguishing features to build structure. So things like the eyes and the tusks, I think would look really great with the darkest and boldest shade that you're using. good amount of time to dry until you see all that shining just dis disappeared. All right, now for the fun part. Once all your paint is dried, you're going to go back with your toothpick and peel up the remaining part of your stencil. So. 
how good does that look? Now that we've saved this bottom space, I'm going to think of a word that I think would look really nice here. Feel free to do whatever you'd like. You can write your name, a friend's name if you want to give it as a gift. Elephants remind me of a peacefulness. I think I'm going to write the word peace. You can do this in print, in your own handwriting. I think I'm going to do mine in cursive. Now when you're doing cursive, if you'd like a brush lettering style, Something to keep in mind is on your down strokes, get more pressure for a thicker line and then release going up for a thinner line. Pressure and release. letters look a little bit streaky give it time to dry go back in and do a second coat on top here's your finished piece I hope you love it I had a lot of fun creating this don't forget to sign your artwork that's super important and hang it up in a place where you can appreciate it and look at it every day Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Turn on the notifications so you can see what's coming out next.